Hi everyone, this is Grandmaster Eugene Perlstein for ChessLecture.com and today I want to share with you a very interesting game that I played recently at the prestigious tournament Reykjavik Open in Iceland against none other than Super GM Anish Giri. Now to jump a little bit ahead of myself, I should say that Anish Giri was the highest rated player in this open tournament at about 2771 or so and he actually ended up winning clear first. So this is a big test for me and let's see what we can learn from this game. I'm learning too and I want to share with you my experience facing one of the world's strongest players. So after the moves d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight f3, d5, this was actually the first surprise of the game. Of course, I am the low rated opponent here, right? I am being outranked by at least 270 points. So I was actually expecting something more dynamic, perhaps c5 going for Benoni-like positions where in complications, you know, obviously he's a stronger player, he may outplay me. Another possibility he may play even this Gambit-like approach, b5, and again this is something that stronger players typically do against lower rated players, try to get into complications early. However, the big surprise of the game came on move number three. He's playing his number one sort of opening repertoire against me, meaning that he either, you know, gives me a lot of respect or he doesn't mind some kind of fourth sequence that may end up in a draw. Given that he's a much higher rated player, he obviously doesn't want to draw against me. So I choose the Catalan. Believe it or not, it's Geary's favorite weapon as white as well. So I'm playing a little bit of a psychological battle, battle here. I'm choosing the opening that he loves against him. So he plays bishop b4 check. This is probably the best way to try to get a complicated position with the closed Catalan because after the natural move bishop d2, bishop e7, I should also mention bishop d6 is quite an interesting try. But after bishop e7, this bishop on d2 as you probably know, is not well placed. It takes away square from the knight and it's actually not perfectly placed on d2 because it's actually better placed on b2 with the long diagonal pressure. So this position has been seen, I want to say thousands of times and obviously I don't want to challenge my opponent in the opening duel. He definitely knows this much deeper than me. So how am I going to try to surprise my opponent? So instead of bishop d2 check, I play the move which is quite rare, knight to c3. This is the third most popular move, believe it or not. The second most popular is to block with the knight, which is still a reasonable position. But knight c3 is an ambitious choice because I'm actually going to sack the pawn. This is in the spirit of the Catalan where white sacks the pawn. And we go into this line more or less by force after castles bishop g2 takes castles knight c6. So what do we have here? Well clearly black is a pawn up but black also has a bad bishop. If white manages to win that c4 pawn white will have perfect harmony in his pieces, no weaknesses and a much better pressure with the light square bishop. So this is the question. Can white win the pawn back relatively easily? So let's see what happens next. Bishop g5. So I want to play e3, queen e2. This is the logical way to develop, put pressure on the pawn, win it, and then play on the queen side. Well, Geary here plays h6. So far so good. We're still in theory. Bishop takes, queen takes e3. And I consider myself maybe not the world's expert in this line, but I have some experience 